Well, it's a statement designed to start an argument, but here goes. I think John Cleese is the comic genius of his generation. He's delighted audiences for 50 years on stage, radio, television and film. Now he's in Australia to headline Just for Laughs at the Sydney Opera House. And I spoke with him earlier. John Cleese, welcome to 7.30. Do people do impromptu versions of the parrot sketch for you in places like airports? Uh, no, not really, but I know an incredible number of people know the sketch a lot better than I can remember it. Hello, I wish to register a complaint. And I remember once when uh, Michael Palin and I were doing Saturday Night Live in New York, and they said, um, we want you to do some new stuff, but will you do the parrot sketch? We said, you don't really want us to do that again? And they said, no, 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 it's iconic. Please, please do it. And we said, oh, all right. We didn't really want to do it, but if everyone wanted us to. And we got a piece of paper out. We said, how does it go? <laughs> <laughs> and we realised we could go out onto the pavement outside and stop people, and they could have told us. Remarkable bird, the Norwegian blue. Beautiful plumage, isn't it? The plumage don't enter into it. It's stone dead. No, no, it's resting. I got a nice cuttlefish for you when you wake up, Bonnie Parrot. Then it moved. No, it didn't. <laughs> that was you pushing the case. I did not. Yes, you did. What is it for your kind of comedy? Is, is it the writing that's the most important part? Because first and foremost, you're a writer, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely right, yeah. I, I'm pleased you say that because, uh, for me, the writing is the great skill. You know, that's the... That's the creative skill. The, the acting is more an, an interpretative skill. And the, the thrill for me is the moment when I think of something. And then the challenge is how to get that funny idea to work in terms of the structure and that kind of thing, which is, and that's what I really love doing. What about uh, looking at uh, some other parts of your career, Faulty Towers? Mm. So you only ever did 12 episodes of that, yet again, that's something that's ingrained on people's consciousness. Well, I, 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 I'm going to be uh, arrogant enough to say I think it really was very good, but the key to it was the writing. I'll stand there and ask them if they want something to drink before the war. Before their lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention the war because Connie Booth and I, and we wrote it together, um, people wondered, because Connie hadn't written anything very much before, but she was a really good actress. I mean, she was a much better straight actor than I was, you know. And we sat next to each other, and it used to take us six weeks to write an episode. Now, this is insane. Nobody, nobody takes six weeks to write a half hour. They might take ten days if they're being careful, but we didn't even complete the, the uh, plot for about two and a half weeks, and that's when we started on the dialogue. <laughs> Stop you, my no. no. I'll do the funny one. Everybody goes on about success, but there's a great problem with success, and that is that it can set the bar too high. Do you see what I mean? So that what follows is, is being um, judged by impossibly high standards of whatever I had done after um, Fish Called Wanda would always have been slightly denigrated, and that's the way it is. It's a real problem with a huge success. In the barrel. <laughs> right. You, English. You think you're so superior, don't you? Well, you're the filth of the planet. The work that you did had a great eye for British culture. What do you make of British culture now, particularly after the riots that we've seen? I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what's going on in Britain. Uh, it, um, or let me say this, I, I don't know what's going on in London, because London is no longer an English city, and that's how they got the Olympics. I mean, they said we're the most cosmopolitan city on earth, but it doesn't feel English. I had a Californian friend come over two months ago, walk down the King's Road and said to me, well, where are all the English people? And I mean, I love having different cultures around, but when the, the parent culture kind of dissipates, um, you're, you're left thinking, well, what, what, what's going on? And then we have, of course, the worst press in the world, you know, instigated by a countryman of yours. And uh, they, their standards just go down and down and down. They no longer even care whether the story's right. They just make sure it isn't actionable. And that doesn't improve one's quality of life. What do you make of what we've seen on that recently? Uh, I, uh, they had it coming to them, and I hope it goes on coming to them. Not that it's just the Murdoch people. I mean, the Daily Mail, papers like that, I think it's coming to them too. 
I see you've toured New Zealand, going back to 1964, mm -hmm. in fact, I think, with the, with the Cambridge Circus, you That's went to New right, Zealand, yeah. and you've been to New Zealand three times. I don't think you've done live comedy in Australia, have no, you? No, I haven't. In 64, it was just that we'd just been in the West End. This was the show that, uh, when I was at Cambridge, we'd done a show in the local professional theatre, and it happened to be very good because of Tim Brooke Taylor and Bill Oddie. I wasn't picked out at all, but those were the stars. And after that, um, they said, do you want to come to New Zealand? So we went to New Zealand. And I didn't do stage, except for Python stage show and Amnesty concerts, which I started, I'm proud of that. And then in about 2005, I'd just been working with Hollywood Studios and it was driving me crazy being told by people who had no idea what they were talking about and who had no idea that they had no idea what they were talking about, how to change a comedy script. And I didn't, it's, it's wrong. Well, please do it. And then uh, somebody said, do you like to come and do a, a stage show in New Zealand? And I said, wonderful. I thought, because nobody's going to tell me what material I can use. Well, finally, we get to see you live here. What can yeah. we expect in Just for Laughs? Well, I'm, I much love the Just for Laughs organisation. I think it's extraordinary. It's been going, what, 25 or 30 years. But they have a little rule, which is they want the audience not to have expectations. So um, I've been asked, don't say who's in the programme, let it be a surprise, but it's a mix of international and Aussie comics, and I'm doing a few things in it too. Well, John Cleese, I'm sure this wasn't completely different for you, but it was for me, so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.